Bang! Knees and Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And today we are going to talk about jeweler's loops and how it benefits you in sharpening. Um, I'm also going to show you some different edges with the jeweler's loop. Um, some bad edges, some good edges, factory edges, so on and so forth. Also, don't forget we do lives every Wednesday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Today happens to be Saturday, so we will be having a live at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Now, let's get into this. Okay, so you can use, you know, like just magnifying glasses and stuff like that. And what I'm talking about here is for knife sharpening with knife sharpening you want to really look at your edge and when you're uh having a hard time identifying stuff a jeweler's loop can benefit you greatly now this is something i just tore out of an old big screen tv you know you see it's a magnifying glass i'm just showing you that you can improvise you can definitely improvise. And then to my naked eye, being able to get up nice and close, I'd be able to see that really good. Um, and then there's just, you know, the old uh, book readers. You know, you can use the little magnifying glass right there. It works pretty good. But jeweler's loops are very cheap. You can buy good ones for under 10 bucks i think this one right here was about nine ten dollars and i'll link some below in the description this one's definitely more powerful than this one but this one's easier to use um they both come with lights and this one also has a tilt which also does help a lot and then it's got the black light and a regular light this one goes up to 60 times this one here does i think 40 times it says on your yeah 40 times and it takes basically a watch battery the batteries last a long time though it's got the same type of lighting system but this one's bigger and just kind of easier to focus and control this one you got to put all the way up to the surface and then your eyeball to the surface you know kind of like you know, looking at diamonds and stuff like that. Now, you want to keep these things always in their pouches because you do not want the lens to get scratched or anything like that. Luckily, they usually come with something. You can also use jeweler's loops for other things also, like um, like checking on scr strip screws or detent holes or maybe even um, detent problems. Um, there's lots of things you can use it for aside from just sharpening. So whether you work on your knives or mod knives or anything like that. And it actually come in a great use for lots of other things just, you know, around the house, you know, and stuff like that so they, they do come in hand so let's look at some edges like i said and we will look at some edges some edge problems so we can help identify some of those problems so first we're going to look at a factory edge really quick and then a um an edge that's done very well freehand um doesn't matter if it was off of a system or not it's just, or, you know, a fixed angled system or not, but just identifying what you want to look for as in good, then we'll go to bad. This is a pretty well done factory edge. And you can see how the lines are straight up and down. Usually factory edges are because they're done on a belt. Usually, not always, but if they're a production knife, they almost always are if not always are but you can see how there looks like there's a couple different grits in there so it does look like they changed belts they didn't just use one belt looks like they used two different belts but the point is is that there it's nice and straight the angle is really nice you can see it's at a nice angle and all the lines are nice and uniform now, if you're wondering how I can tell the different grits, it's because I can see the gaps 
in between the grits. So depending on what uh, grit you're using, a lower grit is going to have bigger abrasives. So the scratches will be bigger and deeper. And um, uh, a um, and they'll be kind of farther apart because they're bigger. Now, a higher grit is going to have thinner, smaller scratches, but very close together. Okay, that makes sense. Now, let's look at a well-done um, hand-finished edge. By the way, the knife I uh, was just showing you guys, this was on a hinder, the three inch, and now I'm about to show you an edge I put on a Hogue Ritter. Now you see my scratches go at an angle, and one of the reasons why is because, if it'll focus, bring it a little closer, is because I like the scratches, they're all running at an angle because that's the direction my edge goes when I cut. See me doing that right there? Shouldn't do that. <laughs> Don't lay the lens on top of stuff. Anyways, so, um, but you want your edge to go toward the things you're cutting. So let's take a look at it again and try to remember it in your mind the way it looks. Okay, right there. Now you see the scratch pattern? This is a 600 grit edge. And it's not coming in very clear. I'll um, show it a little bit more. Might be able to hold it better like this. I can balance a little bit better because this is not easy holding two things at once. There you go. Now take a mental picture of that. Now you see how all the scratches are going the same direction. It's a nice line. And it's also, if you look at it like this without um, looking through the loop, you can see how it's nice and flat. The edge nice and flat um it's not rounded because rounded would be a convex edge which there's nothing wrong with having a convex edge so if you know if you're not worried about it being flat don't worry about it being flat you know especially if you're beginning you know look at me again um try to uh to just get the scratch pattern down you know don't try to hit everything all at once just try to hit it you know as much as you can okay so <laughs> Let's look at some edges that aren't not, are not so good. So one, this is a horrible edge, okay? This is just a, a beater broken knife I use to clean straps with. Um, and sometimes I show like things to do when sharpening and I don't worry about damaging the edge. So this is a heavily damaged edge. <laughs> so you see how one, there's no scratch pattern. And two, you see how there's lines going side to side, meaning not, not up and down this way. There's lines going side to side. Now, what we're seeing there is a change in angle. So that means that's from where I was like showing something and I wasn't worried about holding an angle or anything. And then you can also see there's no real good scratch pattern. Let me see if I turn on the light. Maybe that might help. We got more, so don't worry. This ain't the only thing we're going to show. That light might just be worse off. Well, you can see where the light hits right there. How the light's hitting one part of the edge and not the other. Um, how there's like a shadow at the top. That's because there's two different angles there. So the light's reflecting off of one angle and not the other. That's what that is. Okay, we'll look at a little bit more. And then we'll move to a different knife. That Okay, and then like... Also, you can identify chips with these. You can do a lot of things with these loops. 
okay so you obviously you can see some chips on the edge but what you don't see is a good scratch pattern now let's look at a knife that is definitely going to have a good or a scratch pattern but not a good one this is kind of the same concept where this is just a beater knife i use for projects and stuff um i like i just recently used it to show the marrying the edge how to marry your edge thing and i use it to damage the edge so i could show that okay so now you see there is a scratch pattern but then look at the top of that scratch pattern see that big old line on top of it that is from where there was two different angles it looks like maybe um there was a good scratch pattern going and then it got changed so the angle got changed there and then you can also see where on the very very top of that line that there's a um a finer grit so what it looks like if i had to guess was um I had a fine edge on there and then I put it on a low grit and started sharpening it and just stopped. I think I did it for like just trying to show somebody something. So that's probably what that is. And then let's look at the heel right here, the heel of the blade. You see how the grip pattern doesn't go all the way up to the top. We'll look at it again. It doesn't go all the way up to the top and there's the line through it. So it's three different angles right there. And the grip pattern doesn't cover the whole thing. Now, sometimes when you start sharpening, your, your edge or your angle is going to have to move up or down the edge. So you're going to see stuff like that. That's that you you can look at that sometimes even with your naked eye and see like okay, my grip pattern's starting and now it's moving up the edge and you just need to continue to hold that angle so that it covers the entire edge. You know, not meaning this direction, but meaning from the bottom of the, the apex to the top of the edge. You know, you want to make sure it covers the entire grip pattern, covers it. Now, you've seen how all that was from this little loop right here. Like I said, this is under $10. This one I can do on the camera. It's a lot harder to hold, though. A whole lot harder to hold. Now, let's look at a good edge, right? It's a good edge, but there's little tiny details that could be better. Okay, so this edge right here, great edge. It's very, very sharp. Looks really good. It's a low grit, so you guys can really see it. But you're going to notice something at the tip. And maybe even in a couple other places, because it's not finished yet. But we can identify the issue. And I'll tell you how to fix it, too. So you see the scratch pattern is pretty decent. Um, you see that line, that shadow right there going side to side? That's a change in angle, but that's not bad. That just means I needed to keep my angle going for a few more passes and it would have covered it. And you can see um, right there, there's a couple, there's like a little line on the top of the edge and a line on the bottom of the edge. That's, that's, a, and you know, in all reality, that's, per, that's a fine, fine edge. That's, there's no big deal with that, but... If I wanted to, I could have did a couple more passes. Now let's get to the tip where we'll really see. Okay, so you see right at the tip. Let's see if I can get it at the right angle. You see the tip? I didn't hit the entire tip with my angle. So I was probably raising my wrist a little too much. And it didn't hit it. Now... You know, like I said, this edge is just fine. It's, in all reality, this is a great edge. But seeing that shadow right there, or like the discoloration difference, 
at the tip right there, that tells me that I didn't hit my entire angle. So most likely when I was going across the stone, I was going across and I didn't lift enough. Like, so I'm going across the stone, I didn't lift enough or I might have lifted too much, you know. But, like I said, this is still a good edge, but I do feel a little nick in the edge. Let's see if we can identify that nick. So I felt a nick. Let me tell you where I feel it. Right here. Okay, so. Sometimes you feel nicks that you can't even see because, um... The nail trick is such a good thing to learn when sharpening. There it is. Bam. But the nail trick is just where you take the edge. And you want to make sure your nail's good too. Because there's been times where my nail was messed up. And I thought that I was feeling something on the edge. And it was really just my nail. But usually your nail's just fine. But you just take the edge and you just run it down your nail. It should feel nice and smooth. Now, on a very, very low grit, it's going to like want to dig into your nail a little bit and you might feel a lot of the teeth, but usually even off of like a 300 grit stone, a really low grit, you can get a nice smooth edge if you want to finish on that stone. But yeah, it should feel almost like glass running up, running your nail up it. But to the touch of your skin, you know, depending on the grit, it should have a lot of bite. Now, I want to look at one more thing, and I think it's very important. So, I'm going to show it off. It's right here at the heel of this blade. Now, I put a mirror polished on this edge. And, Timmy, I know I'm going to wind up getting this out through the next sharpening, so it wasn't a big deal. But this is something you're going to find very common. Is that you, you either move through grits too fast... Or you didn't you didn't get something all the way out on your first grit. Right there. You already see it. Bam. Look at that. You can actually see that is the factory edge. Because you, you can see the serrations are running straight up and down. Opposed to mine that are running um, diagonal. Now, that is because from the factory, that was so deep. I mean, it was so deep. It was so hard to get out. And even putting my stone on it, it was so deep that it would literally run underneath the depth of my grit. So, if this is that mark right there, here's my stone. So, my stone wasn't able to get it. Now, it's able to get this side and this side, but I need to remove all this steel from both sides until it gets down to here. And that's why, why that mark is still there. So, it still needs steel removal to get to it. Now, here's a different knife. This is the CRKT Terrestrial. See the tip, didn't hit the tip really good at all. Missed the tip. And you can see the heel, I missed some of the heel right there. And it's just not, you see all the lines like going back and forth. You see some scratch pattern, like the more I move it, the more the edge damage really comes out. We see there's a couple different angles right there. That's why that shadow is coming back and then the top isn't. I'm kind of rotating it in my hand. Kind of like you would a jewel and you can see the different angles. Now you can really see all the lines in it with that light on. Nothing's uniform 
There's lots of um, scratches going side to side. You can see the different uh, grits showing through the edge. They weren't covered up completely. But yeah, you can see all the lines going side to side, all the different shadows and how the lighting's all hitting different angles. That's because there's so many different angles on the edge. It's not one good consistent angle. Now let's look at a decent convex edge. In a convex edge, if you guys don't know, really quickly I'll show you. A convex edge is, this is a V-grind, what we have been looking at, so that would be the edge. This would be the sides of your knife. A convex edge is rounded. So it goes like that. So instead of being perfectly flat on the sides of the edge, it goes like a teardrop, kind of. Let's look at this is a decent one. Um, it's been a long time since I've sharpened it, so I don't really know how good it is. But let's take a look at it anyways. Alright, so you can see this has been overly stropped. Now the reason why I can see that is because the very tip of the edge doesn't have any grip pattern going down to it. Now... When you overstrop, you take the grit out of the tip of the edge. So that's the problem here. Now it's not a big deal, you know, stropping, but you don't want to overstrop. And that's what's been done here on this convex edge. But sometimes to get a good convex edge, it's good to do, you know, a little extra stropping. I guess it depends. Um, but. Still, it's not a horrible convex edge, but it's pretty good, though. Um, it's been used, too. Like, there's scratches in it and stuff since it was sharpened. But you can see there's still some wear. I could have done it a little better. But to the naked eye, it's pretty nice. It's actually a mere polished edge to the naked eye. There you guys go. Um, I will link the, I will link this in the um, description below in my sharpening supplies. So just go down to the description, look at my sharpening supplies, and you will find. Um, I will link both of these just in case. But uh, these are very cheap, very cheap. They're under ten dollars. There you guys go. Love you guys. Peace.